All right, y'all. Uh, we have a super fun crossover episode. So welcome to a channel of curiosity with Rebecca. And welcome to Chatting Human Design with Janelle. Yay! So excited. <laughs> yeah. So we're recording this and then we're going to both release it on our platforms so that we can just share the information with as many people as possible. And I'm excited about it. Thank you for doing this thing with me. Yeah, I love a good collab. This is a good idea. I think it's great for projectors to collaborate because we need other people and we're really the only type that understands our type. <laughs> I mean, you know, fully, you only understand your own type that you can only embody it. So yeah, I think this is a wonderful idea. And I love this topic because it's a hot one and it's been coming up a lot lately with me and my human design people and you and your human design people. So yes, I guess yes. we'll get right into it. Let's dive in. So we are talking about the transits. Um, go ahead, like tell me, tell me your description about the transits. Well, um, I'm pretty casual, you know. So for me, when I when I try to describe the transits to somebody who isn't even familiar with human design, really, I compare it to Mer when people talk about Mercury retrograde because what they're talking about is feeling the energy of the planet as it's moving through the universe and Instead of just looking at Mercury, you can look at all the planets in your human design chart as they're moving through the gates and you get a little flavor, a little spice from the universe of that particular planet energy in that particular gate. So not only do you get a little flavor of a gate you might not have in your um, own human design chart, it might make a channel so that you have a uh, center defined that you didn't have before. This doesn't change your human design. Like I said, it just kind of adds flavor to the dish. And you can also look at which planet is in that gate because that gives you a particular energy depending on what the planet is. So there's a lot of layers. I mean, hello, it's human design. <laughs> yes. This is kind of a cool thing to pay attention to when it comes to the current way that you're feeling or the way that the energy of the universe might be affecting you. Is that, how, is that a good... How do you, what do you think? Yeah. yeah, I like how you said it kind of flavors the dish. Um, and I've, I, I like it too. I feel like I always get a, like a little too one line on stuff. I'm like, well, actually, so it's these particles in the universe. <laughs> That's why I like you is because you do the one line thing and you yeah. have a defined head, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. See, and that's the thing I find with a lot of people that I collaborate with that are better at the detail stuff is that a lot of them have defined heads and I have okay. an undefined head. You mean crown? Sorry, I have an undefined crown. I just have, we're the same. We have the Ajna and throw. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well then it's your one. Hello, yeah. it's the one. <laughs> the one and plus my conscious son is gate 47 coming out of the Ajna. So oh, okay, cool. It, and then you've got all the beautiful G center gates. So, um, oh. yes. Uh, so yeah, um, that was, that was beautiful. And, Thank you. um, the one thing that I found so intriguing is that raw downloaded this information from the voice in the eighties. And then it wasn't until the nineties that the physicists are like, Hey guys, we found these little particles in the universe that, you know, move around and affect us. <laughs> and Raw's like, yeah, yeah. I told yeah. you, <laughs> <laughs> I tried to tell you, you just didn't listen. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is where the physics come in. And it's like you said, you get a little flavor of that gate. And I know some people want to like dig into all the things. And so I'll just say, if you're brand new to your design, it's okay to take some time and come back to this when you're ready. Like, don't feel like you need to dive into everything. And um, yeah, I don't remember what else I was going to say. So yeah. yeah. And it doesn't change who you are. You're, you're ultimately your design. So that's yeah. the part to remember. Yes. I also like this for types like you and I who are open in most of our centers because that, that's that's when the transits can really light you up in different weird, crazy ways where you're like, oh, okay. This is why I, I feel like I need to get everything done right now. To find root, like it's cool to see. And I like to have compassion towards myself when I see this stuff, because again, it's only temporary. And also it's something to kind of just experiment with and observe and see how it plays out in your life rather than trying to say, oh, this is the energy that's going to happen on Monday, which is today when this is coming out. Um, <laughs> and uh, 
well, how can I make it work for me? Or what can I, what can I do? And that's all fine and good, but you can also just observe it and say, oh, well, this is neat. We'll see how this goes. Yes. Cause that's, that's the thing I'm observing is so huge. Then you just kind of gather some information and see how it affects you. And then you can also have compassion for other people. Like, like for you with, you have the 35, 36 for the next two years. And <laughs> <laughs> so that's giving you a perspective you wouldn't have otherwise and yeah. I actually have um one on the bottom I just forgot but so I have my route to solar plexus defined for a while is it the 360 yeah no okay solar plexus um, oh, okay yeah I went the wrong way <laughs> <laughs> um so so yeah you just get this information and that's been helpful for me too where when I feel like I'm stuck in my emotions or like I'm feeling something a little more than I used to feel and I remember oh that channel's on so let's just dig into that for a bit it's the 4130 oh cool yeah excellent um so tell us what's going on on Monday the sun switches on Monday yeah so hopefully this podcast is coming out on Monday and then that's today and this is when the sun and the earth change their gait um they change, I think it's like 5.7 days. That's the, that's the breakdown every 5.7 days. And that's the ones we're going to focus on just because that's about the length of time that we will do the podcast. So <laughs> they're also really strong energies. The, um, your personality sun is like the strongest, uh, gate in your chart. It kind of is a big part of your personality, your identity, and the gift you're here to give to others. Um, and your earth, is kind of what grounds you here and supports you in this physical reality. And so that's, that's the flavor of those particular planets that we're going to go over and the gates that are in them will give us even, even more stuff to talk about. So, um, we've got 15 in, oh, and this is cool. Both gates are in the G center. Yes. But I have, I don't have either of them, which is very interesting to me. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this will be even more fun identity center energy to deal with or have because I do like the G center a lot. And that you're right, I have a lot of energy there. So mm-hmm. it's uh, gate 15, which is the gate of humanity. It's like a love of humanity. And it's about really wanting equality and fairness for all, having a no judgment kind of energy about you and just really being modest and kind. And it's so, it's a beautiful, loving energy. I love it. It sounds so nice. Um, And it's also has a lot to do with human interaction. There's a love of human interaction in this gate. So um, it might make you more wanting to be social (laughs) Um, just because they love they, they love, it's a, like a love of life. So, and humanity, the people in it. So you want to be around them a lot and that might happen to you right now. Or if you have this skate all the time, then this might be like home energy feeling for you. Mm-hmm. This energy can also really bring people together. So you can really match make some people or, or be like, Hey, this person would be really great for you to know in your business or your personal life or a lot, a lot. And let's, let's bring them together. It's like fourth line. Um, profile energy right here, which is is pretty neat. Um, You might also notice that people are going to come to you for stuff because you're, like I said, you're no judgment person with this energy. So they're going to come to you when they have problems and they want you to help them because you're so kind and nice. So just be aware of the fact that you might have people knocking on your door simply because you're, this energy makes you real nice people want stuff from you. (laughs) Um, It can also affect you in the way that it can make you uncomfortable if someone is trying to control you or your life or aspects of your life that you feel are yours to control. So this is like, this is free spirit time in here as well. So you, if, if someone, if you feel like, oh, someone's trying to control what I've got going on, just have compassion with yourself and realize that this energy doesn't want to be contained. It wants to float around, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think this is a really good uh, energy. This is one of the four love gates. There's four love gates in the G center and this is the love of humanity. So I think it's a really nice flowery way to start the week. (laughs) 
What do you think? Absolutely. It sounds beautiful and like a welcome relief from a lot of the conflict that's been going on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so like maybe maybe the universe can settle down for a little bit. And um, it is it is such a beautiful energy. And um, it's part of the channel of rhythms too. So is there like mm -hmm. a universal kind of patterning that comes with this gate? Yeah, it, I mean, it points to the sacral center and um, I have the five, so I'll have, this will define my sacral center for this time in the transits. And mm. um, when it comes to, I know the, that with gate five, it's, it's important, yeah, to have rhythms and patterns in your life that make you feel connected to this planet. And it also can really, um, you can really be affected by the changing of the seasons because um, that's planetary change and this gate really connects you or this whole channel really connects you to the earth because it's sacral center gate. So it's very, or channel, I keep saying that. Uh, so it's very <laughs> earth centered, I feel. Um, so yeah, when this energy comes around, especially if you have the five and you make this connection, uh, recognize what rhythms your body is calling out for what, what, what it, what routines it wants, um, what it wants from nature. That's how I would put that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Cause every, like everything about nature kind of goes in a rhythm. Mm -hmm. We've got minutes and hours and days and weeks and yeah that's what I thought was really cool when I found out I had gate five was oh I I feel more tired and like I want to get less done in the winter that actually makes sense because that's hibernation time and like yeah. and in the summer I get more energy and I can get up earlier I know it has to do with the hot and the cold but I mean that's part of the weather so part of it yeah yeah okay <laughs> what a beautiful energy to yeah, have yeah right right and it really goes well with the personality earth gate which is going to be gate 10 mm -hmm. um, and that is like a self-love energy this is another love gate so it's a love week guys <laughs> be nice to each other um, <laughs> and this is a love of the self and of unique individual expression and this is an energy where you really want to or you really can uh, positively affect others just by your own behavior. And it's really about going to the beat of your own drum and not really trying to fit in with others. So this really fits into the energy of the 15, which is, I don't want anyone to control my life. I'm in control of my life. I got this. And then you have this other energy here that says, yeah, and you're not trying to fit in either. So, so <laughs> don't do that. Um, so this is, this energy is really going to be just I picture like somebody in like a Shakespearean play, like skipping through grass and like a crazy outfit. Um, with like a flower. Just, yeah, with like a little doo -doo 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 -doo, like just like Midsummer Night's Dream. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, um, yeah. I don't know why that came to me. Like an individual <laughs> expression, really happy and loving life. That's that's what I got out of that. Um, and yeah, really, if if you really feel a pull to do something that goes against what you think is fitting in or your friends or the grain or whatever, do you go that like lean into it, experiment with it. Cause this energy is really about finding your own individual expression and being your true self and really loving that part of you. So mm -hmm. it might be a great time to practice some self love and self care uh, practices that you might have, or to maybe Google some of those or ask your one line friend, if maybe they have some ideas and really, really focus on loving yourself for who you are as an individual person. That's really this energy. So it's really nice. I think that's amazing because I feel like that's a lot of why we both do what we do. And I know for me, I run into a lot of women and moms because that's just my world. And it's like they're scared to love themselves or to put themselves first in any way. And so hopefully this can bring that energy forward because really loving yourself is the way that you will love your people and the way you love your environment and mm -hmm. spread love in the world. It has to come within first. So mm -hmm. well about this energy. Right. This is a good week to start this. It's all like <laughs> super love. I love it. Um, <laughs> right. Um, so that's going to be the energy in the sun and earth for the next five or six days. 
And again, it's just something to observe and notice and you can experiment with it or you can just look at it. It's really just there for you to hang out with. And if you um, have a chance to look at your transit with a composite chart of your own, you can see what new channels might be expressed, what new centers might be expressed. Um, I can do that if anyone wants to ever email me for their transits. I don't know what I'm asking for right now, but I'm putting it out there. <laughs> um, or you can always get a just now chart for free on mybodygraph.com and then kind of look at year two, which is what I did for a really long time before, <laughs> before I got I got the paid version. Um, but yeah, that's really how I find this information. And then I also wanted to point out that I mean, I've talked about this a lot in my stories, and I'm sure you've talked about this a lot. The 4323 has mm -hmm. been around and will be around till August. So have compassion towards yourself when you say things without thinking and they come out not the way that you wanted. Or maybe you say something and it really clicks something in someone's brain and they're like, oh my goodness, you put something together for me that I couldn't put together before. It's really about just having downloads from the universe that might not make any sense and knowing the timing and with which to share and with whom to share, but knowing that because there's that connection to the throat, it is shareable information and it should be put out there. It just might need, take some time, need some time, depending on your authority and your strategy. Yes. Always follow that strategy and authority, but I'm glad you brought that up because it is a, a very intriguing energy. And so it's good to be aware of. <laughs> From love to intellectual, that's where we moved. <laughs> yes. yes, but it's interesting because the 4323 is a very individual channel. It's part of the individual mm -hmm. strategy. That gate 10 is as well. It's in the individual and the integration. So, so yeah, just it's just all about when you are you and you love yourself for who you are and you embrace that and recognize that and show up in that, then it helps empower those oh, around yeah, you. Yeah, I love that. As well. Yeah, I love that. Yes, you're right. Independent or yeah, independent energy, individual energy is it's really important to recognize. And you're totally right that all goes together. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told just now. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why I knew when we talked about it, it would be like we would pop how bounce off each other as mental projectors do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's really what's going on in the in the immediate transits that we're going to talk about um, or that I wanted to talk about. And my my thoughts on this is, hey, these are love gates, people. So have compassion with yourself first and then turn that love out into the rest of the world and and be just a little bit nicer and have a little bit more compassion and be a little bit more softer when you feel like being harder um and what else did i want to say oh yeah for me because a, a projector i really feel like this is a good time to examine invitations that are coming in and really feel into if they're for you or not because with the 15 energy of humanity people are going to come be coming to you for help i want help help me out do this help me i have problems and we're projectors too so we just kind of attract that sometimes Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to really look at these invitations and be like, okay, well, is this really an invitation for me? Because as a projector, you know, we're here to wait for the invitation, but there's another piece to that, which is not all invitations that you receive are for you to take. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a one, two punch of invitation. And I really, when I read this, I was like, oh, I, if, if people if start coming into me asking me for help, like those are invitations because that's my time. You know, if they're asking me for things, it's my time and or energy or both. And do I want to do that? Am I going to do that? And I think this is a good time for me to practice that and for fellow um, projector, projectors who have to wait for the invitation to, to practice. Is the invitation right for you or not? And if you pick one and it ends up not being right for you after you've done it, cool, you're probably a third line. I mean, that's kind of how it works anyway. <laughs> that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> yeah, you jump into, you fine. jump in first and you're like, oh, whoops, <laughs> maybe not. But it's really a good way to experiment with it and to have compassion with yourself when you maybe have to get yourself out of an invitation that you have accepted or maybe just finagle it so that it works for you. Yes, 
Yes, I, that's an excellent point because we should always be aware of that. But you're right with this energy, it might be increased. And and I always say, observe, don't judge. So mm -hmm. if you jump into an invitation that turns into be incorrect, then observe. You know what? There's so much that you can get out of that. What did it feel like beforehand? Was there a point where you knew this was an incorrect in invitation, but this you ignored such a one three way to do this? I know, right? <laughs> it's like, I'm going to ask questions, but they're going to be about the experience. And did I learn from that experience? Yes. So, it's so perfect. I love your one. It's like one of my favorite profiles that I don't have is first line. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. I will. I will dig right in there. I'm like, you know, other people are like, leave the past in the past. I'm like, no, let's unearth it. Let's figure out what's going on here. We can use this. We can use this information people. Yeah. So funny. It's so funny. Do you, do you have any, um, like last thoughts or thoughts on, on the transits at all that we've talked about? Um, Let's see, not specifically. I love that we're starting this at the beginning of cancer season because 15 is like, it's a cusp between Gemini and cancer and cancer is all about feelings and um, connection with people and kind of, um, it's the crab, right? So like mm -hmm. right in the outside, but it's protecting your, all your emotions and your deep feels on the inside. So moving into that. So just really be aware of your feelings and love on yourself and enjoy this, this time of learning. I think it's great. Yeah, I do. I do too. And I'm glad that we did this in a true experimental fashion because it turned out really well. So yeah, um, we're going to maybe probably do this every week when the uh, earth and uh, sun transit basically. And we'll just kind of maybe do it in the same format or if anyone has any suggestions for us, we'll always look at those and maybe take them into account. Yes. But we're from the, in the whole thing. So yeah, we're just gonna keep doing it because this stuff, like I said, the transits has become a really big part of my human design journey simply because I am so open. So to be able to look at these things and to see them and to show my friends, like the other day I sent my friend her transit chart and she was completely defined. And she was like, what? And she's a projector. And so I went over a bunch of it with her, but um, it's really fun. And it's a cool way to look at human design. I, and I think it it's fun and not too serious and not too like immersive. So you can kind of hear about the transit and go, oh, that's cool. And know that, hey, this is gonna change. In fact, mm -hmm. the moon's going to change later on today, depending on when we put this podcast out, it changes in the day. So th that moon, that pesky moon always gets me because I'll look at my transit in the morning and then I'll look at it again. I'm like, oh, look this, look at all this happening, but it's only happening for like 12 more hours. So <laughs> it's actually a really good experiment in releasing control and realizing that things are fluid and you just kind of got to go with the flow because it's, that's literally what's happening with the transits is they're they're changing and there's stuff that you like Rebecca said will stay here for years in your transit super fun um but then other stuff just bounces around and you get to kind of watch it go and it's it's yeah. really a neat thing and it it makes me feel like I know so much more than I do <laughs> <laughs> when I talk about the transits and human design like right now when you're talking about cancer and that stuff I was like cool I didn't even know that about the crab I didn't know that it's a hard <laughs> shell but but then there is a gooshy inside that they're protecting. And that makes so much sense. Like I didn't, so. Yeah. Well, and I'm just like, I've just moved into the astrology aspect of learning that. And so, yeah, I'm just getting excited about it. And I like the, the overlap of it all. Um, but I love what you said about how you get to just kind of sample these and to, it's like surrendering to the experiment. It's the ultimate surrender. Exactly. And, um, just again, for anybody who missed it, there's a just now chart you can find, and we can put the link in show notes so that you can access that. And I did the same thing as Janelle, where I just looked at that for free for a long time because I got curious. And so yeah, you can totally do that. You don't have to buy the paid programming. Just once you get obsessed with it and you want to look at the overlap, then yes. Yeah, it's not too costly. <laughs> Believe me, I'm I'm pretty uh, frugal. So I, I was hanging on to it for a while and I'm like you know what no you use this way too much and then when I got it and I saw I was like 
whoa, I can see now how it, how it looks without having to like try to put them together in my own head, which is really not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Trying to imagine <laughs> you're like coloring your own chart. Like, oh my <laughs> gosh. I was like, uh, put them closer together on top. Like how? And, it, and I would usually get it right. And then sometimes I'd be like, oh, wait, I didn't see that this connects here. Oh, but now it all does it for me. So <laughs> um, thank you all for listening to this transit talk experiment. It was super fun. Um, and yeah, maybe it'll become a whole new podcast for us. Oh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks guys. It was great to have you. Um, we will talk to you soon. <laughs>